President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency the First Lady, Mama Helen Ngaiseri, Speakers of Parliament, the Honorable the Chief Justice, Honorable CSs and PSs, Chief of Defence Forces, Senior Officers, Inspector General of Police, fellow mourners, as you have heard, my name is Kongo Mugai, and I'm a great friend of General Ngaiseri. I've written a tribute, but I will not read the tribute, maybe you can read it later. I just want to give a short story about me and the general, and I'm sure a lot of people are waiting to hear that story. It's a 45-year-old story which has been told and retold. And it used to upset the general very much when somebody gave that story and distorted the facts. I and General Ngaiseri joined the armed forces in 1972 with some other young men called Alakan Platoon. If you are here, please stand up. The people we joined together with General, I'm sure you are here. Where else could you be? And you can see them there. In that time, the military training used to take some nine months three months basic training, you go for a break, then you come back for the advanced training. In that time, the British government used to give scholarships to go and study in Sandhurst Military College. But for the first time in 1972, the Indian government, as you have noticed, he trained in India, offered a scholarship of two people, and me and my friend, JK, as I call him, or Eero, we were chosen to go to India on merit. And in the military you don't argue. So we went to India after our basic training. And when we got there to staff, we had to do a crash program to, to learn Hindi because some of the instructions were in Hindi. But we got along pretty well until later on in that year the madman of Uganda, Idi Amin Dada, decided to chase all Indians away from in, uh, Uganda. Most of them wanted to go to Britain, but uh, Britain closed their doors, and uh, they decided to come to India, and they came in droves, many of them. And of course they kept giving stories, horrid stories, how they, their properties were taken, how their women were mistreated and the emotions ran very high in India. In fact about five people were killed in the streets and in the academy where we were, the Tanzanian government, the Zambian government and the Nigerian government withdrew their cadets for fear. Me and my friend we became like prisoners, we couldn't leave the college, we couldn't walk on the streets. So after some time we consulted, I mean between me and him we consulted, and we decided it's no longer tenable for us to stay there. We wrote many letters to our commanders here in Kenya, I hope some of them are here, and they didn't reply, we didn't get any reply, and we really didn't know what to do. So after consultations, uh, we decided uh, to make the decision. We skipped college. That's the only. You two did require makosa here to kutoka bila ruhusa. In a ito a wall in military jargon, absent without official leave. We boarded a train at midnight and landed in Delhi. We went to see the ambassador, an honourable man, Shadrach Kimbarel, and he was very sympathetic. But he told us, "There's nothing I can do. You belong to the military." can make decisions on behalf of the military. So you wait, I'll contact Minister of Foreign Affairs, they will contact the Minister of Defense, then you see what happens. So we were booked in a nice hotel, five star, or Biroi, with a full per diem. <laughs> but after three days the ambassador said, you see, I don't have a, a, a vote for you. I, 
can't sustain you here, can't stay in that hotel, so your people haven't replied, so what do we do? And he said, the Ministry of Defense doesn't reply, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs doesn't talk, the only person who can talk is the President himself. And of course he knew who I was, so he told me, if I give you my line, my diplomatic line, can you talk to the President? And I said, yes. I was very anxious because in the first place I didn't want to join the army, but he bullied me into it. So I was scared he would think I'm just pushing the, 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 the agenda of refusing to, to work. But I was presently surprised. He was very receptive. Asked me, what is it? I told him, I explained, and he said, no, 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 you can't die in a foreign country. You must come back. And I felt, but he, he, he disconnected the phone. He didn't talk to the ambassador. He didn't talk to anybody. So it's only me who knew what he had said. And I think he forgot about it. Because <laughs> for three weeks, we stayed in the hotel with our per diem. And the ambassador was comfortable because he said, now it's cleared. I can accommodate you people as long as they don't come for you. But on the third week, we were caught to the embassy, found our tickets there, and we came back. Landed at the airport, went to army headquarters, found General Mulinge. He was, he was the army commander and the senior most officer by then. So he told us, you go and leave, called this embarkation leave in the military. Go for seven days, come back next Monday. Now, because of all that time we had in India, free time, we consulted further between ourselves. Because they had come from Kenyatta University and we decided we don't want that job anymore. We are not going to the military again. So even as Moringa was talking, we knew we are not coming back. So we went for our leave, seven days. We are supposed to come back on a certain Monday. In the meantime, we said, now what are we going to do? So we consulted and uh, we said, I said we will go back to Bisri, talk to his father and his friends, and convince them to be giving us cows to take to KMC. <laughs> they tell us their price, we go to KMC, whatever is on top, it's our profit. And we thought it was a very good business plan. So during the, that week, he went to Bisri to do his negotiation. I went to Katondo because we knew if we disappear, without them there knowing, he said Moringe to come for us. So I went to Katondo, I went to him, told him we are back, uh -huh. so what are you going to do now? I said, tunataka kufanya biashara. Biashara gani? Akuuza mifugo. Nini muko na mifugo ama mnataka kuwa wezi wa mifugo? And I thought, now where did that come from? So I explained the business plan to him. He didn't say anything. He just asked me, have you been to see your mother? I said, no. So you go and say hello to your mother. When are you going back to, I told him, tomorrow. He said, fine. So me, I went home, said hello to my father. Came back to Nairobi. My friend came back from Bisri. And he told me even that side things didn't go very well. The old man was not very convinced, so he said, let's wait until tomorrow. So the next day we went to Army Headquarters, found General Moringa there, said, put on your uniform. And we said, now this guy wants to take us back to Lanet by force. Lanet is a military training college. We had three months left to train when we left India, so we are not commissioned. But now the idea of going back to the net, those guys who stood up, the one we joined together, by then had already finished their training and they were officers. The idea now of saluting them and calling them sir. <laughs> we couldn't stand it, so we decided we are not going back there. But as we left our headquarters after two turns, I told my friend, I think we are headed to State House. He said, what? I told him, yeah. Another corner, this is the gate. And my friend froze. He said, what is it now? I told him, I also don't know. Let's wait. 
So we went to State House. Now, in the military, jargon, again, when you are going for disciplinary action before your commander, it's called orders. You are going for orders. And a sergeant major, that is the highest, highest rank in the non-commissioned officers, is the one who will march you in. And another guy called an adjutant, who is the captain, he will read your charges. That is when you are going before your commanding officer. Now, it dawned on us that General Moringe is the one who is going to march us in, like a sergeant major. And Mr. Jeremiah Kireini, the PS, is the one carrying our charges as the adjutant. So things were elephant. So we went, we were marched in, hot, salute, and we found the grand old man there. He kept quiet for about five minutes. As we knew him, so it's intimidation and bullying. He was just looking down. Then he looked up and faced the guy, said, I tell you his eyes <laughs> and he asked guys Seri, At work you know we are studying at attention. Guy Seri did another five attentions. <laughs> and he said, No, sir, no sir. And Musa told him, Don't call me sir, me is kaburu. <laughs> so Guy Seri went quiet. Utafanya kazi. He kept quiet. Then Muringe told him, Say yes, sir. So guys said he was confused. Mzee is telling him, don't call me, sir. Mulingi is telling him to call him, sir. And from that time, he didn't talk again. He just kept quiet. So Mzee looked at me and said, Nawewe, utafanya kazi? I told him, unajua tuliongea jana. <laughs> he said, you know, I'm the commander-in-chief of the armed forces and the president of this republic. If you refuse my orders, where are you going to go? And I thought this was getting serious. So he looked at Mulinge and said, Mulinge, he vijana warudi kazi la net, yuri atakata umuacha kamete prison. <laughs> and our goose was cooked. That afternoon we went back to la net. The rest is history. We trained with the people we found. On the uh, passing, out, uh, passing out day he came. He, came. he takes, usually takes photographs with the people who have graduated. As soon as the photograph was, was, was over, he turned around. He said, Wapi de vijana yangu? Wako wapi kumu? Wako wapi? So I told him, I'm here. That time we were not very good friends. So he said hello. He said hello to my friends. And guys, there was right at the end. For those who know military formation, he's very tall. So he will be at the head of the parade as a right marker. And he said, You don't have kiyako tena I told him, no, he's right at the end. So he called him. And uh, he said, bring these boys. We went to the officer's mess. And um, Mze was not known for giving people anything more than a hundred bob. But he gave us one thousand bob each that day. And then he talked to Kaiseri in Kimasai. So I don't know what he told him. So as soon as we got out, I asked him, what was he telling you in Masai? So he said, no. He told me to be steadfast. Niwache mchezo mingi and I'm going to be a great leader. And that sank in Gaiseri's heart. Every time we talked, he would remember. You say, remember what Mze told me? And of course with me, I couldn't wait for the evening to blow my 1,000 bob. Then we went and bought two cows. For people who know Gaiseri, he has a big herd of cows and uh, his maparasha butchery so every time we get a bit tipsy you tell me you drank your cows these are my cows and i would like to put it on record that my friend never drank more than three beers his friend here can vouch for him he's never drunk more than three beers so that's my life with my friend and as i stand here on behalf of his friends guy said he has many friends he acquired through his long, illustrious career in the military, politics, government. I'm just a first among equals. There are many of us. We are many friends, but we all can't fit here. So I was told to say this on behalf of all his friends, and I'm glad that I was chosen to do that. And before I sit down, 
I want to appreciate, recognize Helen, a real woman of substance. She's quiet. She's quiet, soft-spoken, very reserved, but don't let that cheat you. She's a woman of steel. If you want to know, she could start guys saying, you know who that is? We want to join him in the general. She's the only one he never told that with his left hand. And since those, we snatched her from her father's house about 40 years ago, there's another military jargon when your friends in the military go to fetch your bride. We call it the snatch party. It's going to snatch the bride. And I was privileged to command that snatch party some 40 years ago. And here she is. Beautiful girl. We like her so much. She's helped our friends. She is the... Can you imagine a general becoming a politician? Can you imagine? Generals don't talk politics. They don't even think politics. So how do you think he translated so fast? He didn't know anything. I, I told him when he told me he is resigning. I told him, who do you know? You don't know anybody. Who are you going to talk to in Kajiado Central? If it was not for this lady, my friend would have never made MP Kajiado Central. Let me tell you today, he would never. But she has such strong networks up to today. And Helen is JK's friends. We thank you. You born him beautiful children, brought them up. We will always be grateful to you. Generals don't die. They don't die. They just fade away. So I'll say adios. Adios, my friends. You will meet again. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Captain Retired Kungu Mwegai. I think that is a great experience, great relationship, great friends, and we'll always remember uh, that encounter you have had with our great general. Now, uh, Brigadier General Retired Farage is not uh, present, and therefore I request uh, our CDF, Chief of Defense Forces, General Mwasate, to come and meet his tribute. While he's coming, may I take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to recognize the presence of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable William.